Okay, welcome to the Deerfield Finance Committee meeting of March 28th, 6 o'clock. Uh, we're, we're on the go. We have a have an agenda and we've got minutes from the last meeting. Heard somebody say something about corrections? Yeah, there's two corrections that I found. Okay. Um, one is on page three, top of the page, plan of position salary. I had left out the budgeted and recommended dollar amount. Yeah, should we? 41,530. What is it? 41,530. Requested? 41,530, but both are the same. And then on page. Uh, so budget recommended is zero, right? Zero. Budget oh, recommended is zero. Right, it was zero. Ooh. Well, it was recommended, we just voted it down. Oh. No, that's ours. That's our recommendation? It is our recommendation. Okay, that's zero. Yeah. All right. Um, then on page four, test well monitoring. Mm -hmm. I had budget request of 60, and I believe it should be 70. Yes. So can I have a motion? Uh, I make a motion. We accept the minutes with the changes we just discussed. Second. It's moved, seconded to accept the minutes with the corrections. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? It's 600. Yep. What's today's date? 328. Okay. Uh, you've got a new uh, budget worksheet or expense detail, whichever. Uh, the pink. Well, box. The oh, pink yeah. highlighted ones are the ones that, uh, where we have voted something different from what was requested. Just so that you know what those are. <clears throat> okay. Are you, are we all in agreement with those are the, I think there were three items. Uh, Four, yeah, three. One, two, three, yeah, three, three items. Okay. And we have four or five items to take up tonight, including a couple that we're going to have to revote, or it's been requested that we revote because they're new information. Uh, the first one, since it's the order in which it's there, test well monitoring maintenance. And they're requesting that, uh, or saying that they will need 50,000 and not 60 or 70,000. Here's a sheet. Would you put this one over there for Mary, too, just in case? Yeah, here she is. Make a motion we approve this budget. Here, just 50,000. Oh, <coughs> any, uh, any discussions? Need a second. I'll second. It's moved and seconded. Any discussions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the budget, which is $50,000 instead of 70 or 60. Aye. All those in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 600. Zero, zero. Okay. Change the date on that uh, sheet, too. It was approved by Finance Committee 322. It'll be 328 now. And let's see where that is here. Right up there on the top right corner on the sheet itself. Well, we did initially approve it at 322. Yeah, we did. Yeah. But the new one is 50,000. The new one is 327 on the bottom. Should be 328. Yeah, but he's right. We don't want to carry forward the bad date. <laughs> I watch okay. out sometimes they want to charge it twice. Yep. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next one on is interest on maturing debt. Now, I haven't had a chance to look at this, but uh, there's a got an account number for us, please. Uh, I'll give you a copy of it so that you can have it. Seven fifty one. Excuse me. Seven five one fifty nine hundred. And I'll put this one over here, perhaps yep. from here. Yep, thank you. Is this going up or down? Thanks. This is down. Down. I, down I have three. no idea. When do we vote this? 
January 8th, we voted. We did? Okay. We approved it. So what's different? I don't know. The roof is down 3,000. Yeah. What, what's the number? It's one, one, 751. 751.5900. No, I meant what, what's, what are we voting? 178 or 181? 181. 181 is the old one, Skip. Yeah, one, uh, the sheet you just passed out is 178. 181 is the old one. I don't see what's in the budget here. Because they, they requested 178 and then the recommend, which would be our column. You evidently, I wasn't here, but you evidently recommended 181 for some well, that's reason. The well, that's, that's the old amount. That's because we voted. They requested. Maturing they're, changing well, no. their, they're changing their request. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. They're lowering, like you say, the roof. So we should just re vote it, just like we did with the test. Okay, block. so this is, yeah. I guess I, I would rescind the previous vote. Yeah, but cross it out there so that you know what it is. It's, uh, so the requested figure is should be now one seventy eight zero zero six, and you're right. It is three thousand dollars less on the uh, on the screw. Roof. I make a motion we accept the new in, the new amount of interest and maturing debt. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, it's unanimous six zero zero. Change the date on that sheet too, just like test well. Okay. It's got one eight on up top there. Yeah, yeah. They'll have to change it. They, did they change it on this to one seventy eight? Yes. Uh, well, 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 no, they haven't uh, yet. No. But yeah, we're going to we're going to change it's it. Upside to down kicking. Well, they changed the request. Yeah, one seventy eight. Yeah, they changed the request right <laughs> yeah. here. But they voted them out. They didn't change that yet. Right. Yeah. Who okay. cares? And then the data. I don't care. Okay. <coughs> Three, two, eight, eight. Take care of it. Okay. Uh, wastewater treatment. It's somewhere in the back. Don't ask me for a number because it doesn't have one. And uh, tab nine. That's where I have it. So, does everybody have I this, can. one that looks like this, or should I make copies of it? I yeah, have it. It's like a summary. It's a summary. Yeah. Okay. It says zero dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has to do, apparently, with the fact that it's a... Uh, this is an as an enterprise fund. They're proposing it on this annual town meeting as an enterprise. <coughs> yes. Um, the total is eight hundred nine thousand six hundred twelve dollars. Three pieces, of which you should have two of them. Oh, you should have all three of them. Uh, salaries. Expenses, and then on the expense budget is the indirect expense. The indirect expense is lumped together with yeah, expenses on the, on the yeah. sheet itself. It right. is. Right. It's down it's the last, uh, um, <clears throat> last line item on the uh, expense sheet. Right. So just Kevin is still under the weather, and... Uh, so he's not here to present it. If there are questions, I guess we can put them on hold and, and uh, worry about those later. Uh, the first one of the salary items, do, do we want to take these up? Is there we, any objection to taking them up, I guess? The salary is pretty cut and dry, I think. Yes, I agree. Let's take them up if we run into a problem, okay. we'll put them on hold. <coughs> the first, the salary item 13843, that's one sixth of the uh, highway uh, superintendent salary, and it's in the wastewater budget. He's paid that one sixth of his salary out of that. I believe it's one sixth. So if you have any questions on that, 
Yeah, these are all out of the salary schedule. Any discussion on this? The only question I have is the 416 that's highlighted, is that that's the overtime hours? Yeah, is that an increase or what's that? I, I don't I don't believe so. Can't be much. There's that only a thousand dollars difference. It's the overtime hours. It's all Keith Milne. Well no, it's it's a high it's yeah, it was it is all Keith, yeah. It is all Keith. It's overtime. So it looks like they take the highest person. Yeah. And times one and a half the salary, times the number of hours they anticipate. That way, if anybody else works, they'll be able to cover it for sure. It'd be for the good, it's conservative. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I guess it would be sort of, it would make more sense if they did 150 hours for each one of the, or something like that, but that's cool. not uh, Health insurance went down a thousand, which is kind of unusual. Half is a little off, though. That's is it? Well, thirty and a half times one point five, and they got forty four eighty. Yeah, I know it's just odd. in my head is forty five something, forty five and a quarter. Yeah, forty five change. So, which one are you looking at? <coughs> the, the, health the overtime, the overtime oh. at one and a half, one point five. Yeah, it should be at least forty five. Mm -hmm. Should be at least forty five. Yeah. We won't. We okay. won't. Uh, it's probably some random number, maybe. Well, it maybe may it, it may be a melt. It may be a melded number with yeah. uh, Keith and the other ones too. The other question I have is um, about salary: is if they come in between three and eleven, and that's overtime because the body worked for eight hours, do they get differential pay? Was well, the differential pay only paid? Supposedly, it's only if, it, if it, supposedly the differential is only if they are working a regular regular shift. Yeah, okay. if, if a three to eleven is a regular schedule, <clears throat> was my interpretation. Well, that's I, what, I was wondering that because the police department doesn't have it, but that's because of the union contract. They've got a contract. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, but uh, the way I read it, the, yeah. that that person that personnel when they passed that was the it was for regularly scheduled. Uh, Shifts. Yep. And that makes sense. Are we satisfied with the? I, the only problem I got with it, it we've, we've been, he's been budgeting too high for 2016, 2017. Huge difference, 2017. $75,000 or 65000 I have no idea why the. Uh, it might be all in the overtime, too. Yeah, I have no idea where it is. Yeah. No, and. Uh, so maybe we can cut back. I don't know. What, but if we what cut are, back, if we cut back then we cut back the revenue, which cuts back the fees, right? That's up to the selectmen, John. Yeah. What, what do we do for. We don't have a breakdown. Sewer rate charge. How do they calculate that? Do they take uh, two uh, take all of the budgets and just? I think they take total budget. They take everything that's been appropriated, mm -hmm. and they put it into their reserve fund because they're not using it right now. Mm -hmm. And then they take out of the reserve whatever they need to pay the people. Okay. And whatever they don't have for money to cover anything, they just take it out of the reserve. Okay. The rate is developed on gallons, total gallons used, I believe. Yeah, okay. yeah, but isn't it the cost divided by total gallons? Used? Yeah, I think there's there's something in there about total <laughs> gallons. But. Yeah, they're supposed to schedule that and what they do is they always ask for input and they get input from two or three people and they come up with three or four recommendations and they say what's going to be the best for the sewer district and then they just vote it regardless of how it comes out. Like last year they turned around and said minimum Dollar. billing $200. So it's minimum $200. Okay. 
Oh, it's, uh, I think actually last year they dropped, I think that two years ago it was 200, the last, last year they dropped it down to 180, I believe. But whatever, that's... Yeah, but they right. make a reduction. Yeah. So. And usually plus, plus a gallon. first billing in the fall, the second billing, they usually change that too. And they've vacillated back and forth on every policy they've had for it. The last several years, whatever the rate has been, when they set it at the beginning, it's two billing cycles. Yep, yeah, that's, that's correct. For, for quite a while. The only difference is the winter, uh, the summer billing, summer billing trying to is no more than 125% of the water the usage of the winter because of outdoor watering, sprinklers, uh, sprinklers. You know, gardens, uh, pools. swim pools, stuff like that. So they calculate the summer at no more than 125% of the winter gallonage. The minimum fees still stay in place, but the gallonage would. Uh, be capped at 125 percent and then that way they can't ask for abatements supposedly yep. that's yeah that's the policy unless there's some extraordinary situation because uh they wouldn't have to they'd, they'd already been abated to the 125 percent of the reduced down to right. that point yeah right but there is cases i mean it's uh, you know somebody say somebody has a water break yep mm -hmm. they flood their house out which those things do happen, not very often, but they do happen. Well, you know, it, 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 it they can calculate pretty good. I mean, it's, it, uh, the uh, water district is really, their technology is really up because I asked for a printout and they gave me a printout that it's like day by day, how many gallons I used. So. Uh, South Deerfield, yeah. What's that? South Deerfield is up. Yeah, so, you know, because I questioned my bill. Old Deerfields, written by him. And I, they gave me a day-by-day -day printout. <laughs> really, I mean, it, I, I was shocked that it was down that, you know, that well. Well, you should know. I, your daughter probably had said something to you. Well, I'm just, yeah, it's not something that I'm familiar with. Since yeah. Even though we're in the so-called district, the cost of putting the water line up through ledge 200 feet digging into a ledge just never was. Well, yeah. <coughs> I, I was amazed that, you know, as a matter of fact, there's probably, you know, if you request it, there's probably too much information on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no. but they tell you what fixtures we're using the most? Or? Oh, no, no, they haven't yeah. got down to that point, but as I said, it, they, they, have, they can chart it out to a daily usage. Okay. And so, across the 24 hour period, too. So if we're satisfied with this uh, salary budget, can I have a motion? So moved. For two hundred and sixty-five thousand two hundred and ten dollars. Okay. The motion is there a second? Is it what the backup is in two hundred sixty-five and then what was it, Bruce? Two hundred and ten. Two six five two one zero. Two one zero. That's what mine is, isn't you? I'm working off an old old car. Well, so. did, well did, if you look, well, two, it, it says the street I have is two twenty-eight. So I have two of them. If you got this one, yeah, twelve twenty-seven. Uh, <coughs> if you got this one here, it should no. be. A, oh, that's the only no. one that I don't have. No, I don't have that one. And I think I was. He's got an old. He got oh. an old salary. Right. right. Okay. See if, see if Mary's got one there. She may not have. Two sixty-five. Two. Oh, that's me. It's Mary it's wrong on the sheet that we just handed out tonight. The summary sheet. Does it yeah, matter? Yeah, summary sheet. Yeah. Does yes, it, it does. matter if the budget is wrong? Because of the, it's just going to go back in the rate anyway, right? N right, but I'm just saying that it has to be appropriated, though. Right. Right there. You appropriate that, and then what they do is they use the reserve to balance it regardless. That's how they turn around and said, I'm just in old Deerfield, they said, oh, well, they recommend uh, replacing a line from Main Street to the sewage treatment plant and going through somebody else's field. And they spent four hundred thousand dollars just like that, no vote or nothing. Now, with an enterprise fund, is that going to still be able to hold true, or does that it have to be appropriated at that point? Well, it's supposed to be appropriated, but it doesn't matter. Whatever's Sorry, appropriated, it's going to be yeah, no, that's great. made Thank level you. by the reserve fund, right? Well, yeah, it still has to be, be brought, so. It should be brought before. It's going to wind up coming to zero, though. The, the bottom line. Okay, Bruce. Okay. Uh, do you have the same two seats? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So we get a motion. We have a second. I'll second. Move seconded. All those in favor of the wastewater treatment salary portion of the budget? 
Aye. 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 Stain. So that's five zero one. And uh, we have the expense budget. And that's about $54,000 roughly. And the biggest item on that is the item where it says uh, sludge trans uh, transportation and, and disposal. Right. So there was something in the paper the other day about Greenfields, and pretty yeah. much what you saw in there mm -hmm. applies to us to the transportation and the I think half of us have been on the sewer, yeah. are on the sewer study committee, so we're yeah. quite we aware of what's happening with that with deal, yeah. whether we like it or not. Yeah. So. Somebody isn't other than me. Who else is not on it? Just you. Oh, just me? Yeah, oh, no, no, no. Fine. Bruce is, Bruce is not at the moment. Bruce isn't at the oh, moment? Yeah. You were, though. Or I was. Okay. Yes. So can I have a motion, then? So the Actually, I had some questions. Oh, go ahead. Um, I can't answer. I know. <laughs> so equipment repair and replacement. Um, item. Let's see, where are we? The 70K this year is 61K thousand. Does that sound right? Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. I wrote this a long no. time ago. What are you looking Might have been the old, we had an old one. You looking at uh, equipment repair? Yeah. Uh, about the one, two, three, four, five, fifth one down from the top. Yeah, it's gone from 15, 15, 20, 28, 31, 35. I don't have an answer. No, I don't either. Okay. Part, it sounds like they have a problem anyway. A good share of that has been uh, Captain Lathrop. They've had a lot, had to replace pumps up there several times. Well, they're proposing they got to make a correction to clarify it. So. It's supposed to go in front of CIPC. Um, that's. Been a big issue That's right been there. A big issue. Sewer line maintenance. You know, the problem is we don't have a breakdown of what they've expended. Sewer line maintenance is ninety thousand, and they're proposing ninety thousand again. I'd just like to know what they've completed this year for sewer line maintenance. Do we have any idea when Kevin will be back? But if we can get a breakdown of this budget, we might be able to answer some of these questions. Um, the other question I had uh, is the engineering consultant fee for the financial model and IIP coordination. Uh, it's 28000 and they're playing 32000 next year. They had 26000 last year. And they proposed 32. I'd just like to know do they, they have somebody they're ready to sign a contract with? What is it for? No. Well, we, we, you were here at the other meeting. You're talking about the engineers that. I don't know. No, that, I don't know that, anything either. This, this should be, I think this is. I think this is outside of that. I think this is the, 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 when they ask the question, what contracts they currently have, it's these two contracts. One was 26 and one was 32. So they've already signed this contract, I believe, for the fiscal year 19. We just need to pay for it now. Now they need to pay for it. The thing that they tried to do was DEP requires that you do a survey of all your inflow within know, the first yeah. three months or four months of the year. They couldn't do it last year because by the time they got the thing, it was too late. I think it was May, so they requested an extension for one year from DEP. Yep. They granted the one-year extension, and then Kevin already signed a contract for two of those to turn around and do it already this spring, and, and yeah. they're working on it now. That's that's what I understand that is, too. Um, in the second phase, second part, that 32,000 is of what's called phase two of the design, which shows what needs to be fixed and gives you a schedule, which they're going to submit to the state, on how it will be fixed. There'd be a dollar amount associated with it too. That's phase two of the I and I study that they're doing. Of oh, the I and I study from years. 
Uh, the yeah, INI mitigation, okay. I don't know, they got 50,000 last year, 50,000 this year. I don't know what that is. Seems like it's part of the other stuff. I don't know. Yeah, the infiltration and mitigation. Committing increase by 3,000, which is probably fine. Administrative, which was, this was a, a number that I couldn't understand. Yeah, that was one I was questioning. So Administrative indirect expense increased by 28%. Yeah. So I don't know why that would have increased by 28%. I know some of the others have increased, but I don't think it's anywhere near no, that No, 10, much. 11, 12%. Yeah. And yeah. So but this is 28. Yeah. And I think that should be looked at by, or at least explained, why they need that much more money. I don't know. Is that, is that much more to run an enterprise fund? I, mean, I don't know. It could be part of it. It, uh, part of it, yes, but I think 28% is 6, worth questioning. 6,000 yeah. out of 20, yeah. Yeah. Is it, that's a huge jump. So I don't know. Those are the only questions I had. If You want those, Skip? Uh, yeah, or, or now, do you want... Answers? Do you want the answers before we budget this or before we vote it? Uh, it's not going to make any difference, I don't I, think. I guess, you know, that was my gut feeling on it. I just want to make sure that, that everybody understands if we're hiring a new engineer, this new engineer is potentially under contract for more than one contract, maybe three or four. And we're hiring him again to do something different, which incorporates a lot of the stuff we're already paying him for. Maybe the selectmen, though. You suppose? Of course, they know everything. Okay, I, I, that's my only discussion. Do you want to join in on the discussion here? Yep. Wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> <laughs> you guys vote it? Expense? To hire? No, the 544000 wastewater treatment plant and expenses. Yeah, okay. So, if, I mean, I, I'll, I'd let it go. If it's all going to go back to the enterprise fund, I just want to make sure it is. that um, the sewer users aren't getting scammed here. So, I, I think the number that we're looking for is $516,206 first time around, and then $28,196 for the second vote. I, I don't know. <coughs> I'm not sure, but that's. If you don't mind, that's what I would. Twenty-eight one ninety-six in the second time. Yeah, the twenty-eight one ninety-six is the administrative indirect expenses. Yeah, it was twenty-eight four the first time they submitted it. Okay, right now it's twenty-eight one ninety-six, and I don't know what the difference is. Yeah. I've got it. I've got it scratched out here, uh, the the old one. So. Yeah, I do too. <clears throat> Does that show up as local receipts on the town side? It it does. For FY 2018, it will not for FY 2019 because of the move to an enterprise fund. Where does it show up? You're asking the wrong person. It's got to show up. I would think it's it has to show, to show up, up somewhere. somewhere. It's got to show up somewhere. <coughs> Skems. Where does Skems show up? Which basically it shows up on their own balance sheet. Yeah. So. Yeah, they, there is a separate balance sheet for the. No, but that's a. In effect, saying that they're going to pay twenty-eight thousand dollars to the town. To, to the, the town, town, right? There right. is an income. There is an income item on the town side. Okay, yeah. that's all I'm asking. No, no, there's not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, We're, someplace got to show somewhere. Um, there might be an income item, but it's not. It's always all the indirect costs that we charge skims, um, all the districts, all that goes back into free cash. Uh, it's not charged against any of the departments or as a credit to the departments. No, it can't be. Can't be. Can't. No. This will go back into general yes, fund. Yes, we'll bet general fund. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is, this is this year, so it's not showing this. I don't think we need to answer it now. <coughs> I, I don't. I think yeah, I don't. when it comes back in, in the next year, whatever it is, that money should be allocated towards the budget for the that. You were voting on the year that it's certified as free cash, as an example, 
is twenty eight thousand. When it comes back next year and is, and is certified, there's twenty eight thousand in free cash. That twenty eight thousand should be a, a debit to whatever departments are involved in that. So it'd be right. credited back. So we shouldn't be paying taxes again. Should be a credit. It should be a credit. Well, I said, wait a minute, no. Which one was the town clerk? That's something Brenda can. I think she. Yeah, Brent, well, Brenda could explain where. where yeah, it is. which one I was the town clerk's budget? Uh, it's the 100 numbered series. And Wasn't I'm there not something sure in there. there. You want to take a vote on this then? Yeah. While we're looking for it? Sure. Okay, we're voting the uh, <clears throat> expense budget, waste water treatment, and enterprise fund expense budget, $516,206. It's not shown, Bruce. No. You need a motion? Uh, yeah. You made it? I do need a motion. I'll make the motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Move, seconded. Discussion? Discussion. I still have an issue with uh, providing uniforms without the uh, mm -hmm. going through across the uh, being brought before the town is mm -hmm. an acceptance of the uh, statute. Just would you explain it? Good okay. one. Okay, uh, I did last time when it came it's to the, the uh, general. Uh, I don't think it needs to be just in. Okay, all right. Are we here? You want to read the minutes? Yeah, okay, <laughs> read the minutes. Seriously. It's in there. Is it? Yeah, it's about chapter 40, MGL 4. Uh, There was an, um, in, no, the minutes before that. I'm sorry. I don't have it with me this week. I don't have it. Basically, there's an accept, accept, acceptance in Mass General Laws. I think it's 40 J. 40 J and B. L, I L. believe. Yep. One allows the town to accept that, and one is for leasing of cl uh, work clothes and stormy weather clothes, and the other one is for purchasing. And, uh, do you know if that's on the agenda, uh, on the uh, warrant? Yes. For, no, no, on the town warrant for this town meeting coming up. For acceptance, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you're, oh. at that point, we'll be okay. If the town accepts it, yes. Okay. I mean, well, that's, uh, okay. Because the other budget went up from, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars to 5400 in like three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, with no policy, is this where it's going to keep going? This is that's out, that's outrageous. Oh, I read that same uh, rule. I read the same law, and it talks about stormy weather and mm -hmm. workplace clothes. But in fact, that's not what it's being used for. I've seen several invoices that it's been for underwear, socks, jeans, things like that. I don't know. Even if you accepted it. I don't know. How aware the limitations put on the purchases. I, I think the issue is that there's no limit on it, and people are saying, "Well, you're one tenth of this department, and if we got five thousand dollars in there, you can blow five hundred dollars any way you want." So they go out and buy the uh, right. fancy T-shirts and whatever else they want. And the bottom line is, I think that statute is only for winter wear, yes. or like for the sewage treatment plant for people who are working in areas that could be hazardous to their health. So they have to wear boots sure. and gloves and hats and protection for themselves. I, I would hope that the department buys them for the employees, not giving the employees uh, a voucher to go out and buy what they want. But the, I would assume the employee comes back with a receipt for says, yeah. this is yeah. what I purchased. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess my concern is to get it passed, and I would think yep. it would be up to the select board to set a policy to uh, put parameters on it. And the thing that we would want is every piece of clothing should be stamped property, gear field, whatever. But I think that uh, you know, I think the town should accept it first, or be aware that it's a line item, 
and, uh, and then I think it's up to, I personally think it's up to the select board to set a policy accordingly. It's, uh, I don't think it's any committee's job. I think that's a, public, yep. that's, yeah. that's a uh, policy that should be set, set by a select board. It gives yep. us something for them to do. Right. Yeah, that's okay. Right. That's right. <laughs> I found the revenue <coughs> thing, the 28196 Okay. It's, it's um, in the revenue details of the funding okay. sources. Yeah, and that's that's somewhere somewhere. the revenue. I've got a new one here. No, but I mean, that's where it is. Yeah, yeah. okay. But it's I not applied it back to the department. Hmm? It's not applied back to the department. No. Okay. Which I think it should be. Do we, have, we did have a motion, right? And yeah, there was, was a second. second. And it was second. Was seconded. Okay, all those in favor, $516,206. Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain again. I have a Stained. problem approving 516000 without, no, so without knowing favor, what it is. Zero opposed, three abstentions. So what is it? Three, three zero, in favor. Three, zero, three. three. Does that right. pass? Yes. Yes. Three, nothing. We have a quote. Uh, okay. Indirect cost, 28196 I don't have that. I don't think. On the sheet. Oh yeah. Okay. So on the overall sheet. It's it's also on the expense. Uh, oh right. Well, we approved that. Did we? I don't know. That's I just got this new one, and so I thought the direction that they had one. was revoted. No, we never. I don't think we ever voted wastewater treatment before. No. So I think when we voted the expense, we voted the total, as I, including indirect. I think the summary sheet is There's just a summary sheet. Another one of those things. It is. So we voted five forty-four four hundred two. No, we didn't. No. We voted. So I I see what the issue is. Yeah, we're, we're, we're yes. voting. Uh, so we're not, we should, we actually yeah, didn't, the wastewater treatment plan expense was 544-402. The summary sheet doesn't really mean anything as a vote. It's not a budget. I, I, I realize that. We voted 516-206 for the. Uh, yep. And if we vote another 28196, that will bring us up to that 544-402. Yep. Right. So if it keeps if it keeps the town happy, have three votes. I'm willing to do that. I'm okay with the 21, 28, 196, So I'll make a motion to approve it. A motion. We have second. A second. It moved. Seconded. Uh, we don't have any details, so I guess you're either for or against it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Extensions, six zero zero. Okay. Twenty eight one ninety six. Uh, do you want to take up OPEB funding again? I told uh, I told Brenda that I would ask the question, and whatever the decision was, the decision is. So that's it. We, we haven't voted. We haven't voted. Yeah, yeah we voted. We voted something, and I don't. It's not on here, but I do remember voting something. I think we, we on January eighth. We not we voted, voted against it three four zero. Right. Okay, so we haven't voted anything then. On what date? But then they changed. Oh no. On sorry. what date? They, they did change it. They did change it. I agree. It seems like it what was. What date? Uh, January eighth. January what? Eighth. Okay, so it was here. So what would you like to do with this? That's what I have it in. You drop it down to thirty-five to, to ten thousand dollars and the thirty-five thousand. Yeah, my, my recommendation was twenty-five thousand. That didn't go anywhere. Uh, yeah, my recommendation was forty-three. It didn't go anywhere. My recommendation was zero, and that didn't go anywhere. Yes, it did. Yeah, we've all. That's my recommendation too. <laughs> All right, so it's retirement stabilization fund. Or no, other employee benefit stabilization yeah, fund. Yeah, I, I okay. so we don't just to do this now, so why turn around and start taxing the No, we're using, we've already taxed the people for the money. Free cash, we use free cash. 
At least we're tying up free cash where people can't use it for willy nilly. It's not free cash. It's coming out of the. It's already taxed. We've already paid for it. Taxpayers have already paid for that. The majority of free cash is over taxation. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, there's other funds that right. come in, but the majority of it is over taxation. But whatever we vote tonight is going to come out of this year's taxes. Right. That's what I'm saying. Oh, well, it, but the budget will be, be funded, balanced by free cash because be oh yeah, like cash. every other year. Yeah. yeah. Right. Last year's tax. Well, it may be and it may not because the selectmen make that decision where they're going to get it. So they could just add that right to your taxes. To raise an appropriate. Yeah. Okay. You still got you still capped off the max of whatever the uh, rate right. is, which they which they uh, uh, go to the top, top every year. Yes. All right. Yes. They they. they as long as I've been on the board, they have not. I think maybe one year they left one or two pennies on the table. That would be and, above. And Bernie screamed. And they, huh? and they cry about it when it happens. Right. Well, look, one penny is a little over six thousand uh, dollars. I think it's quote, getting approaching Close seven thousand. Okay. So we have ten thousand dollars in there. We got to. Yeah. What something. would you like to do? Somebody make a motion. I, I, I just don't think we need to revote it. The ten thousand was from mm -hmm. last year. No, I'm saying. I just said for the ten thousand dollars last year, we should reinvest it somewhere. It shouldn't be sitting in the general fund. No, it's not in the general. Fund. Uh, it's not. It's it in can't a separate be. account. It's in a separate it account. Is? It yeah. has to be yes. yep. okay. isolated from all of the funding. Okay, but I don't care to vote. Well, you want a motion? I'll make a motion that we authorize ten thousand dollars to go into this OPEB fund. Okay, we've got a recommendation. We've got a motion for ten thousand dollars. Is there a second? I'll second it for discussion. It's moved, seconded. What's the discussion? Anybody? I don't have any discussion. I just moved. The only thing that mm -hmm. they said was, from years now, the governor has said one strategy that you can use is wait until you finish catching up with your retirement, which we're paying on now, and once that's funded through 2033, then you can turn around and go after this one big time. So we don't need to do anything other than either throw a few bucks in there or do nothing. I'd like to have some kind of presentation by somebody instead of people telling us we were told to do this. It's hearsay. I, I would agree. Us. I I think it makes sense that we bring somebody in and explain this to us. Not not now, but after town meeting uh, or during the summer, whatever. The problem is if you get an expert in help up, they're gonna come in here and say, Oh, your liability is two million three hundred and thirty four thousand dollars. And everybody's going to panic. Which is fine. It's going to be on the balance sheet anyway. How are they going to calculate it? It's so going to be on the financials. Tell me what it is got to do. They take everybody that's working now. They assume they're going to work up to 65 years old. And they figure out what they're going to be making for, for uh, all their future cost increases, assuming like a 25 or 3% increase, not like right. our generous 5 or 7% increases. And then they turn around and say, our insurance... And uh, 2030 will be this. Our insurance in 2040 will be this. Our insurance in 2050 will be this. And they want us to have a fund to have us all paid up front. And that's why they come up with a two or three million dollar. That's right. Uh, uh, the key. So they talk in insurance, not retirement. Right. This retirement is separate. Retirement is separate. Insurance, separate. insurance, insurance only. Right. Because, insurance because and we fund insurance every year. It's in the budget. But do we're paying it as we go now? Yeah, we're paying as we go now. So if we fund OPEB, we're paying twice. We're we're paying for a future to try and get caught up. Different That's, people, we're, but we're paying twice. We're we're putting money away so in the future they can spend it. But this is basically for insurance. The stabilization fund. Another one, yeah. It's I I really. <coughs> I mean, it's pretty cut and dried. I, I'm concerned about their calculations for what, how they calculate for an individual. If they did up to 65, that person would have worked. And, and we do that on an annual basis. And yeah. no problem. They retire at 65, and they're on Medicare. Yeah. And it's the Medicare portion, and that's the problem that I've got, is that we, it, our Medicare is roughly, uh, I'm going to say, about $300 total per person. Uh, per month. 1.45%. Yeah. 
Well, no, no, no. I'm saying that the cost of Medicare insurance, the oh, cost in of general. the insurance, once once you retire, yep. Medicare pays whatever they pay, and then if you have the supplemental insurance, yep. it's about three hundred dollars a month per person. Uh, that depends. So let's let's assume that it's that, that it's two, there are two people on the plan, so that's six hundred dollars a month. $7,200 a year, the individuals pay half, $3,600, and the town pays the other half. So if they live for 20 years, it's $72,000. And that's over a 20-year period. How much do you have to invest so that you have $72,000 that you hand out $3,600 a year? And it's not anywhere near... Fifty thousand bucks. It's more like twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars. How many employees in total? I, that's the question. Yeah. Uh, we, and and, we uh, we and if yeah. we have to put it in now, take a look at the employees that we have now, and how many is that, and how much do we have to put in? So mm -hmm. sh tell me what it is. And, and I don't, and I don't what? see this multi-million-dollar. Well, unfor unfor unfortunately, you know, they're looking at the worst case scenario, and, and insurance has been going up anywhere from t 10 to 20 percent per year. Now, if you take that factor in that's there, where that's, factor. you know, that, that's that could a, balloon yeah, that no, goes we, way to hell out of proportion. It's, and, med it's Medicare. The, the, no, but I'm, t I'm, talking, I'm talking the employee the, the, the employee contribution for the supplemental plan. Yep. Okay? Uh, that's, you know, that's been going up astronomically year after year. I don't know. And Mine hasn't been going up. I that just much. I'm moving into Medicare in a month or two, and I've been researching it. Skips right. It's a couple hundred bucks for the supplemental plan. It's 134 for Medicare. Yeah. Well, there again, it depends so, on the plan that you choose. But I mean, for, I didn't see any for five or six hundred bucks. Uh, so no, they're not that high at this supplemental point. Supplemental plans. Yeah, it might high. be five or six hundred bucks for two people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So okay. so let's just. Vote this up or down. There's a motion. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to uh, put ten thousand dollars into the OPAD fund. So let's have a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Abstain. Step. Okay. So it's four, one, one. All right. That's done. I just don't know enough about it. I hear both sides, and I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Capital stabilization. We haven't talked about well, this. That's for ten thousand, right? We voted. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Yes. So I'm going to turn this over to you, uh, Jeff. Capital stabilization is the next one on the uh, list. We have two hundred thousand that we put in. We don't have a sheet for that, right? I no. I believe so. No, Let me no see because we get to add to just a Warren article. Yeah. Okay. This so is a Warren article. There's something in here. What sheet have you got, John? Huh? You mean oh. an budget sheet? I don't have a budget sheet. Is it, what, it's you, only on this. Oh, where the uh, two hundred thousand? So, oh, it's on there. It's right here. But who recommends oh. it? That's what we put in last year. I know, but who recommends it? The selectman. Recommends what? The, the capital stabilization. Uh, Tom meeting. No, I think the selectmen have to recommend it and put it in the recommended right. comments. That's what I feel, too. Yeah. So I don't think we can, until they make a recommendation, we can't. they well, got to make the recommendation. We can listen to what you have. There's nothing right. been requested according well, to this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Even though that the cap CIPC the, is the, the Right, right. the Capital Improvement Committee uh, brought this up. I believe it was like February 27th. I could check my calendar, but it was the night before our finance committee meeting yep. and doing the numbers at that finance committee member and seeing where we really stood budget-wise. So prior to that, when we met, we, we discussed uh, the stabilization fund and what we thought uh, would be appropriate for a request. And that discussion ranged anywhere from 200000 to 500000 And committee decided the 500000 uh, would be a would be a recommendation for a request to add to the stabilization fund. Part of that being that, uh, as we all know, that there's several projects coming down 
coming down the, the pipe here. And I know there's been some discussion after that, which uh, made a lot of sense. But anyways, the 500000 was recommended. Part of that thought process, too, for the stabilization fund was uh, money going into the stabilization fund spent a little differently than the general fund takes two-thirds to get it out. And so maybe people would give a little more thought about what they're voting uh, on the town floor when uh, the items came up and it might might impact the difference between wants and needs. People may be a little more aware of uh, what they're actually voting to spend. And with that two thirds, that was part of the thought process. In the meantime, obviously, as going through with the finance here, well, we take a look and obviously we're going to have to figure out where we're really at financially. Uh, we could be tight this year instead of two years down the road. Part of the $500,000 request or recommendation was that uh, in the past there hasn't really been a capital stabilization mm -hmm. fund. And at the same time, knowing that budgets could get really tight, I think people were a little concerned that uh, there might not be money available to add to the stabilization, the capital stabilization fund in the next year, two, or three. So if it was available this current year, FY 2019, they would recommend the additional monies. You and I want, think that's what the mindset was of the capital improvement I committee. think I've got some figures here so let me pass these out, and uh, maybe maybe some of these will answer questions. And please remember that request was made back in the end of February. Pass this out too. I believe it was brought up at the joint meeting too. Wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was brought up at the joint meeting. I'm not sure that Mary's going to get here. Do you want to take a look at some of this stuff? At least these two. Yep. <coughs> this Thank was you. prepared by. This is this is Brenda. Brenda. Yeah. So let, let's let me take this sheet here, the one that's two sided, and just quickly I'll go down through it, and then you know we can talk about it afterwards. But at least you can see what's there. The first one, uh, FY 2019 column, property taxes, that's the, the total property taxes uh, that we can levy, $11,282,886, and I believe that includes, uh, I got that sheet. 84,000 Pardon? The 84,000 84, gross. I got it here. Yeah, do we, do we have the breakdown of that someplace? Yes, yes. I got it. Yeah. So, it's yeah. A, what I have is off $3,000, but okay. from what she's got. Do you, you want it, or do you want me to read it off? Or? No, I want to see if I can find mine, too. You can borrow mine. Yeah, you can borrow mine. Uh, the new growth in the, in the color sheets. All right, so I'm going to take this one. Yeah, it's it's slightly different, but for discussion purposes, I think we're probably close enough. Yeah. So let me do this. And I'll pick up. Some of it. <coughs> I don't yeah. need one. Is the one you made, John? Hmm? Is that the sheet you made? Did I made yeah. on my spreadsheet? No. Well, no. No. Okay. No, this is a tax levy calculation. It's what he's doing. Oh, right. From before, yeah. No, mine was a summary yeah, we got it. that Brenda did, which is here. Yes. She's got an updated one. Yeah, it's pretty close. I have, well, mine's 3, a couple weeks old. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying the revenue start numbers are pretty close.
Thank you. Okay. So, tax levy calculation. Uh, it starts with the prior years, and with the prior years, that's the uh, ten million four hundred fifty-nine thousand eight hundred and ten dollars. Uh, two per, two and a half percent. That's what we can raise it. So this is a levy limit calculation. It's not necessarily the amount of taxes we collect, although. Doesn't very much. Of it, does it? <coughs> no, they bump it up every year yeah. right to the max. Uh, new growth, uh, eighty-five thousand bucks, which is about half of what it was last year. Well, the, the revenue detail for two thousand eighteen is actual. This is estimated. Okay, that's the difference. Uh, Brenda got angry with the, the assessors and said, "I'm sticking eighty-five thousand in there. I'm not going to ask." Five. <laughs> 84, 960, yep. <laughs> whatever. And then I think she had second thoughts and wanted to raise it higher. But in any event, total levy limit, $10,806,000. Debt exclusion, 476000 for a grand total of 11282 And I think that is the number that's on the sheet. It is. Yes. Okay. And then state and county chairs. So this is, this I believe is the governor's budget. Your, his yep. suggested amount. Yep. Um, so from that, um, uh, we will bring in a net of one million four hundred and thirty-six thousand six hundred and forty-four dollars. And then allowances for abatement overlay, reduce it by sixty thousand. Local receipts, these are all estimates. And I want to, I do want to pass something out so that you can see it and uh, <coughs> find it here. I said I wanted to pass something out, but I find it first. Oh. So, about 18, when we get to receipts, are all estimates. All the these are, these are the actual numbers for the last. Uh, Actually, I don't think so. Seven years. You didn't have 18 yet because it hasn't ended. And 17 is a, is a round number. Uh, and it says local receipts, all are estimates. I just passed out the, the, actual, actual, the actual. For 17? Okay. FY10 through 2017. Yep. And you're right. 18, we won't have those numbers until... Uh, a close approximation, probably in you know late August, early September, and yeah. then you won't have the actual numbers until uh, the assessors go through and do their thing. on it. But at least you've got an idea of what we have brought in in the past. So I'm not sure exactly what to, what Brenda did to come up with these numbers, but again, it was it was doing something like adding up all the various accounts for the last five years and then maybe taking 75 or 80 percent. A couple of exceptions in there if you notice there are at least two. If you look at the pilot, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that one varies all over the place. Which one? Two th pilot. 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 Uh, payment in lieu of taxes. The reason it varies is because people will promise money, but we may not get it in the same fiscal year. That's it. Yeah. Uh, That's from the private schools. Yeah. Right. Yeah, primarily. And, and, the pilot the and the other one to look at, and, and the last two years is a good example, licenses and permits. 172,016, 566,017. And that's one that we should not even be planning on for, mm -hmm. well, uh, for using for budget purposes. So, well, yeah. yeah. So if you want to know where free cash comes from, yep. that's one of the big items. And uh, sewer is shown separately because it's, uh, well, it, it, matter of fact, it won't even be in local receipts nope. after this year. Right.
Okay. So with 19. Yeah, let me go back and find it. Versus 17. It's about 50% increase from estimate to what it was in 17. $3 million in FY17, we're estimating $101.6 million in 19. Well, I, I'd go back, I would go back and use the. Well, even 17 is 1.6. Which one are you looking at? We're looking at the revenue detail versus local actual local receipts. 17, we, we got 3 million. $347,000, and we estimated one million six hundred seventeen FY17. FY17? Yep. So we're about a million and a half short, over what we thought we would get. Uh, short? Well, no. 1.6 million. Very conservative. Take, take the uh, 2,375,000. Versus yeah. the one million four hundred and sixty-eight, right? Don't take, don't count in the sewer. Okay. Don't count the sewer in there. Yeah, so that's. And yeah, also that's recognize that we brought in in seventeen five hundred and sixty-six thousand in, in uh, fees, primarily from building permits. Yep. Uh, so you really have to sort of back that one out, or a lot of that out. And that's that's why. It's a wide fees increase, number ten. I can see licenses and permits. <coughs> I don't know. <coughs> Is there something different with a fee than a permit? Uh, yes. Uh, what? What's it, Why we had two hundred eight thousand dollars in fees in fees in two thousand ten? I have no idea. Everything else was pretty close. It, we would need we would need Brenda to give us that. Yep. Because that was a big increase, just like the yep. permits were a big increase. So, you know, what might we expect to, for closer to 16? 18 or 19? Uh, well, you got the numbers that they estimated for 18, which is 1.4 million. Uh, 19, 1.4 million is being, I think that's maybe a little low. Uh, maybe there's something that can be done there. But let's just use the figures that are here for discussion yep. purposes. Uh, that's actually 1.6 million, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And they had 682. So, someplace there is a grand total. Maybe it's on the back page. Continues. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you've got other funding sources and other accounts. Dickinson Library Trust. I'm not sure. You no, got some. Really there's your South County. Uh, yeah. Wastewater in South County. Yeah. yeah. That's the wastewater reimbursement for the yeah. admin costs. Yeah. So the estimated overlay surplus. Does that look about right to you? Hundred thousand. That's what. That's what they they released that one. I think. Uh, what's that? The. Uh, on the. Up here. If, oh, uh, that uh, there, for I, 19. I don't know what the not. There again, it depends on uh, the, you know, what's outstanding. I know Barbara had done a tremendous job over the last several years as far as uh, uh, unpaid back taxes. So, uh, yes. Uh, and this year, too, with the new tax laws, a lot of people paid prepaid ATS yeah. taxes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yep. it very well could be a big difference. Yeah. So, it's. Uh, They'll definitely be skewed. Oh, yeah. So again next year. Right, and you'll see it again next year. <coughs> yeah. All right. If you would get down to the bottom where it says free cash. Yeah. Uh, we've got one point eight million. The proposal here is to use eight hundred and eighty six thousand. And someplace there is the budget total of fifteen million four hundred and sixty four thousand dollars. Yeah, that's uh, a little color. Is that on this thing here? That's on yes. here, yeah. No, that's on here. It's on this sheet Skip. that you're talking about the free cash. So both Here's places. a summary. Skip. Right, oh, here. right here. That's got the revenue and then it's got the money we need. Right. We're going to spend. For the yeah. budget summary. Let me see if we can find it. This, one here. this sheet doesn't have a total completely because we haven't voted everything yet. 
I, I, yeah. that, but at least you've got some idea of what. It gives us an idea where we're at. Yep. We have a couple of other things that I'm going to pass out just so that you can see them. These are new. Somewhat new. 15... Four, 15-4. Over 15-5. Frontier's looking for a tractor. This is... Well, can we just back up a minute? So we're gonna, well, you're proposing... Brenda's proposing to use $886,000 to balance the budget. Is that that is correct. That no, is, not the balance. No, that to, to yes, well, for lack of a better term, yes, eight hundred eighty-six thousand. Yeah, but she's short. When she does that, Skip. She's short. Still one hundred fifty thousand short. I, yes. Well, that's what I was wondering. I don't know what's going on again. But based on what's here, yeah. based on what's here, yeah, you do need you need that eight eighty-six. There are some other ones. I just. No, you need well, more than 880. You need more than 880. What's based on what's here? Yeah. But then she takes those numbers and puts them on those and brings them over to a sum, the budget summary, <coughs> which is the second. It appears to what we're going to appropriate. Right. And, and we're short 150,000. I I do know I know that. That's what. Yes. Yeah. Because total expenses, instead of being 15 million 464 thousand, are now. Fifteen million six hundred and fifteen thousand. Right. Yeah. Yes. And the revenue figure is is it's really not accurate. It includes it, free cash. It of includes free cash, and that's not revenues. Well, that's what she put in it. But yeah. so yes. So you really need nine hundred and twenty or nine hundred and thirty thousand. I just gave cash. you another thirty three thousand here. Oh, I know. And so, and let me let me keep going. Yep. I'm not going to stop. Okay. There's no sense stopping. No. Nope. Here. Let's do more. Have they even done the capital? And add another five thousand to this for transportation. We've already voted this budget. Though. No, we didn't. No, we voted a buck or something. Yeah, there's a buck in there. Now you've got a number to put in there: seventeen thousand two hundred and sixty-five, and you got to add transportation to that too. And God only knows what happens when the second youngster. Comes or did along. we vote for for Franklin County Tech? I thought we no, voted no, no. their budget. This, this is in Franklin County. This is Smith. Oh, this is Smith. This, this is, is Smith Volk. Tuition to Smith Volk. I forgot. See, don't you wish you'd, when you grew up, you went to Smith Volk? You could have got the town to pay for your tuition down there for 17000 bucks. So it only had one student? For the time being. And again, someplace along the way, All we've right. got to throw something in for transportation. Do I have any more good news? I must have some. Ah, uh, why not? You got the tractor, right? Yeah. Okay. There's nothing that we're going to do with these, I don't think. Did we? I think we voted everything we needed to vote. Uh, yeah, these are more articles. I think that's one. Uh, well, well there's the, the tractors on here. Um, there's a warrant article, though. Well, we're gonna, we have to recommend it or not. I got too many papers. But so what do we do with Smith's vote? That's on here. It should be. It is. We don't have a sheet for them. No. Seven. No. Seventeen. No. I guess it's not on. It's not on here. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It, it's on there someplace. One dollar. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. yeah. One dollar. Right here. Uh, right saying. under. Right under Skims Enterprise Fund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep going down from the water wastewater treatment plant. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we've done the wastewater treatment plant. I was going to leave the rest of the, and we actually did the uh, OPEB. Snow and ice. That's the best guess at the moment. I think it makes sense to wait a little bit, another couple of weeks, another week. Can't go too much longer, can we? Was uh, it three weeks from Monday? Thirtieth, I think. Is it the thirtieth? So it'd be four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah, the problem okay. is that this stuff's supposed to all be in print by March fifteenth. Right. Yep. So that you can so, send it to our printer, so they can print it all out. And hand out a packet there. April 15. April. No. No, March 15. I said March 15. You did no. say. So, no. so we take. That was two weeks ago. Week and a half ago. Last, last I heard, we ended up taking it 
last year up to uh, Staples. Staples, and they turned it around in 24 hours. They can. That's good. So, but it might cost a little more. Yeah, I don't even know. That can't cost a little less, actually. I know, but this year it might cost more. Yeah. So, we didn't. We we, we did vote the capital items, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, we did. We didn't vote snow and ice. No. We didn't vote frontier tractor. We didn't vote Smith vote. And and I would say we can probably wait until. It, are we going to meet next Tuesday? I'm not. We're we going to meet next Tuesday. No problem with me. So what are you doing? If we need to, it makes oh. sense. I'm you can't go. I'm I can't promise. Go I can't promise I'll be here. I don't know. As long as we get a quorum. One, two, One, two three, three, four. I hope to be. Twist Mary's arm to get here. Uh, you, Bruce. Is that official? Yeah, next there's, Tuesday? there's a chance uh, that I we'll, might not. We'll talk before but, we go, but I think, yeah. But right now, I anticipate I will be here. And I, I just wanted to throw this thing out so you could see it. Let me see if I can find the last one. So we're talking about spending, a, not keeping very much free cash. Well, that's what we always do. Good. Now, here's here's the next one. <laughs> Six, seven hundred thousand dollars. That's if we. It'd be if nice we, if we could keep that. Money. If we did the stabilization, we're down to a hundred thousand. What is? Uh, yeah. What are you estimating it's going to cost to, to fix the sewer plant? Ten million dollars, good. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't be anywhere near ten million. That's, what you that's do. a down payment. Well, that, that, yeah, well, this would be well, a, initially no. I guess it depends how you go about it. Over too. the long, uh, over several years, you're going to keep adding on. So well, it's going to cost you to stop giving me paper. Give me a bigger table. <laughs> you got you. How much bigger table do you need? <laughs> really, Apparently you more. Two seats. Three seats. <laughs> and and you came in empty handed. You're in the metal so you can spread out your I know, paperwork. I know. <laughs> how about if we go get that table over there for you? Let's go get him a table. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yes. go help you. So, so you want that on the side, or do you want it in front? I'm kidding. <laughs> so this is only nine hundred, nine hundred, uh, well, nine million, because a million is going to be for design fee. Well, the point, the point is, this is this was just a, a quick amortization schedule. Yep. And you got three pages. One is for three percent interest. One's three and a half, and the other one's four. And what I wanted to do is just have and bond payments. When they're made, are made every six months, not annually. Uh, but for discussion purposes, uh, if we're if we went out and took a ten million dollar bond to do something, whether it's a sewage treatment plant or a wastewater treatment plant or anything else, or library and community we've, center. We've got, yeah. So you got principal sense. repayment would be a half a million dollars a year, and the interest, depending on the rate. Yep. 300,000 for 3%, 350,000 for 3.5%, <coughs> 400,000 for 4%. And we better do it fast because the rates are going up. So that means your annual repayment between 800 and 900,000 a year for a $10 million loan. If we put it all on the tax rate, which we're going to have to, give or, give or take, what, what last figure I had was about 650,000 bucks. Oh, I, thought good it, I, thought was, I thought it was a little higher. Than and that, you were going to say seven hundred thousand. I thought it was around six six eighty five. Let's call it seven hundred for. Let's call it seven hundred. So now we're talking a taxable property at three percent, eight hundred thousand bucks. Uh, you're talking about a buck fifteen on the tax rate for twenty years, decreasing a little bit. Eight hundred at nine hundred thousand. You're talking a buck thirty on the tax rate. What do you have for total value? If, if we, uh, Bruce? hang on a minute. I Bruce? think it's around 685, 690, but I'm not sure. Taxable, taxable property. Million? Where is that? Yeah. yeah. But, well, it's not bad. But 600, if you, it will increase the tax rate a dollar if we spend $650,000. Right. That's a rough. Estimate. If we put this on the on the sewer user fee, on average, we've got what about eight hundred users? Eight hundred and eighty. Yep. 
So let's take the 4%. That's a better one. So you get 900,000 bucks. It's $1,000 for each user on average. Increase. Not, not total. But. That's, where, that's where I'm... There again, that's what the sewer studies committee is supposed to be looking at. The sewer because, study, there is because, a sewer study that has numbers in it, but it's based on because that's you know that's million. because that unfortunately you know I'm I'm on the sewer and I'm opposed to being pulling pull on tax rate because you have ninety percent of the northern part of town is tax exempt that's on this property. Did anybody see so it's, the the ruling or the information from town council? That's one, of the things that, that's one of the things I was going to put on the agenda for the next meeting. 75 users, 25 non-users. Yeah, read, read, read it carefully. I know. It's, it, right. I, just, I don't think that's a discussion that needs to be brought no, here. No, I, I agree. I just wanted everyone to take a look and get a feel for what the cost of doing something. Doing then, anything. Now you have to keep understand that this is probably will this will probably come out within the next five years and there'll be another seven or eight million dollars thrown on top of that. Yep. Right. And then and probably some more on top of that. And then you've got the other treatment plant that will need something. So next five years or ten years. Yeah. So yeah. So so, so, so yeah. So you're not just talking this, you're talking about you know within compounding ten within ten years, five years compounding this to at least Twice as maybe a little more. Maybe five to ten years. Yeah. So the reality is we can't afford it. Everybody stop flushing. Or sell quickly and move out of town. Well, Flush more so you can get more money out of them. It's the idea of the tax rate's going to increase so much whether the town can afford it. What's what's the average? It's all going to be it's all going to be um, uh, voted on as an override, right? It have to be a debt exclusion. It doesn't have to be, but more likely it's going to be with these numbers. So, is people willing to pay a dollar every dollar more every five years for a ten million dollar investment or a six hundred thousand dollar investment? It's not going to be a dollar. It's going to be a dollar and then a dollar and a half and then two. Right. But right. Even with the growth, a dollar every five years additionally. And you know, in the other the other side of that coin is, you know, you start bumping it up on the tax rate that fast. Right now we're at sixteen dollars, one point six percent. Okay. No matter what you do, overrides, debt exclusions, everything else, you cannot go over two and a half percent, period. You're capped. And there's towns up and down the valley right now that are at that ceiling. I think Either Long Meadow or East Long Meadow is one of them. I think Greenfield is in the low twenties. Yeah, but you can't go by tax rate. You can't go by tax rate. That has nothing to do with it. I'm talking two and a half percent of the total valuation of the town. Okay, you can't use overrides or nothing. You cannot go above. If you want to use seven hundred thousand is the taxable property, right. then your your the maximum you can do with all your overrides and everything else would be seventeen five. Okay. There is already cities and towns that are up against that ceiling right now. You start running this up on top of uh, your annual 6% on your rates, you're going, you know, within 15 to 20 years, which is, sounds like a long time, but it's really a very short period of time, you're going, to be outside, you're going to be up to that, and at that point in time, you're going to have to cut services. Okay, there's no such thing as level services budget. It will be cut the budget, period. So uh, we really have to keep that in mind. You know, it sounds it, like say uh, 1.6 sounds like it's a long way from two and a half, so, but it really is not. So how do we how do we educate the public on this? Hopefully, they're listening to some of these conversations. Give them uh, so something at town meeting. Give them a piece can, of paper with some numbers on it saying here's what could happen. Simple, we, something like, simple. Like I suggested last year, maybe we should do some projections and flowcharts. To do a presentation for the finance committee at town meeting. I don't, I don't know if there's, there's a whole lot we can do at this town meeting because at this point in time, we'll be, accused, we'll be accused of scare tactics, frankly. Right, um, I, I agree because we'll have, unless, unless uh, Slotman can give CIPC what they're thinking about for stabilization, and then they keep stabilization, keep a couple hundred thousand dollars in free cash. 
that's all we're going to be able to have. That's all that's going to be left for next year. Right. And if and if you look at the uh, and you know that's again, what I think needs to be brought up. I mean, Brenda said we might get six hundred thousand again in free cash for next year. But yeah, I think eight hundred thousand compared to one point eight we spent this year. Right. But there again, the, you know, just looking at the yeah, highway department, I think they did a very good job as far as a, a spreadsheet for capital down the road. Maybe, I'm sure, you know, things can be trimmed and so forth. But most of the equipment was done over a 20-year program, which is really not that bad. But just to maintain that 20-year program, uh, they worked out a calculation of $115,000 a year. $115,000 a year. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah. And, and using a lifespan on 20 years. So that's just one department. We haven't even looked at buildings that we have not put anything away for for years. Uh, you know, well, our, just... The frontier school is one good. Yeah, well, that's coming up. You know, so so. But I'm just saying, out you know, out of the capitalization fund, you're looking just to yeah. maintain okay. the highway department of $115,000 a year, much less anything else. Yep. So there again, getting back to what Jeff uh, said before, people are going to have to start deciding what they want and what they need. So the more money we put in stabilization, the better off we're going to be. And I think, uh, well, yes and no, I, because uh, I think, well, go ahead, comment on uh, what happened up to the uh, GCC with the foundation budget. It's a double-edged sword is what it is. Yes, exactly. It really is. Exactly. Put it into stabilization and get your free cash. And the state says they don't look at those numbers and dollar to donor, they look at them because that's staring them in the face. And they say, you want us to give you money? You got a $1.2 million stabilization fund. You got a $1.9 million free cash figure. That's $3 million, and you want us to give you money? You're rich. Take a look at these little towns like Worthington, Goshen. What do they have? They don't have budgets like we have, and they don't blow money like we have. We have a problem. Every time we get something in front of us, we just go, I, 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 and that's a problem. Part of the problem is we know that the majority of our budgets are labor. We cannot afford to keep giving this uh, rate that we're given with a 5% increase every year, plus a 2% cost of living adjustment on top of it. We can't afford to give 7%. We can't afford to hire new people first. That's the can't biggest need. The problem is people are leaving the private sector and coming to us because the pay is so good <coughs> and the benefits are so good and the retirement's even better. You get a normal retirement for Social Security, you're lucky if you pick up uh, $2,000, $2,500. As of a few years ago, the average recipient for Social Security was like $1,100 a year. It's not the much, average. It's not it's much, much higher than that right now. And I don't think it's much higher. So the bottom line is, and what do the guys get paid that work here for 20 years or 30 years and go get it? 80% of the salary. Yeah. So you're well, talking- 50% of the insurance. 25, 30,000 a year compared to 15,000 for Social Security. So people are leaving the private sector, coming here because they're getting good pay, good benefits, and a better retirement. And the bottom line is when we go to town meeting, there should be a lot of no votes, but I don't think that's going to happen. Well, I don't think, with, like Skip says, with, with the 1.8 million and still holding back seven or eight hundred thousand without putting anything in stabilization. We're gonna say you can afford this budget. You've already, you've already we've already paid for it. Well I you know but but I, I think, think we put enough in stabilization that shows that maybe we are not gonna have six hundred or seven hundred thousand dollars next year. Maybe we there's it's always a reluctance, though, to take that money out of stabilization. Uh, that's and it takes two thirds of That's two a good thing, though. That's right. That's that a is good a good problem. thing. Yep. That's why, right now, with, you know, when you're talking 1.8 or 1.9 and the term free cash is attached to it, that's just, that's a train wreck looking to happen. I'm sorry. And I, I really struggle with that. I hate the term free cash. I do too. And to end up carrying that much, it just, it just opens up the door. That's why I don't think door. we should be carrying any more than 
$200,000. Well, it used to be called the excess and deficit, didn't it? it used to yeah, be? No, no. That's, that's what it's called in the schools. Okay, so, with silver taxation D &D. is what it is. Excess and deficiency account. Excess and deficiency account. Okay, account. But, but the uh, uh, and it's in it's, it's it's still it's still you know there there is a certain amount that comes from other fees, mm -hmm. but a lot of that free cash comes from over taxation. But Bruce, part of that is because we always vote conservatively for all the budgets. When we get the figures from the town and we turn around and say, what are we going to get for income this year? We always put down a million and a half, give or take, and we get two and a half million. <coughs> give or take. Right, but That's where our free cash comes in. Because we don't know for sure what we're going to. I get. understand that, but we, we do not know. we do not use any of that for the following year to offset the tax rate. Exactly. We right we the next year we go right to the top <coughs> of, the point of, of our levy again. I agree. I think that money needs to be used to offset the, the uh, part part of the problem is that if you because everybody raises their hand and says yes. Part of the problem is if you take that money and offset the thing, the state looks at it like if you don't vote your two and a half percent increase. They don't want to give you any grants or anything. Uh, so it's a double-edged sword. Everything that you do, it's a double-edged sword. That, One way it helps you, the other way it hurts you. The, 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 what the happens if you end up using that free cash to, to ease the, the budget till you get to a point where you have a reasonable amount of free cash? Then you, if you lower the tax rate or you don't go for the full 25 and a half, and you say go 2% <coughs> for half, half a dozen years and you use up the free cash to level up. Then you could go back. You wouldn't have so much free cash and you could go back up to 2.5%. Well, the, 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 theory, the theory behind this whole thing, and it, it's a valid theory because, I mean, you know, I've sat there and I've hemmed and hawed myself when it's come to voting on that. The theory is, the problem is, is um, if you don't go the limit, you lose it forever. You can't catch up down you the can't road. You up. can't turn around next year and say, well, you know what? We're strapped this year. Let's go for three to make up what we didn't tax the but year if before. But if you only went 2% and you use that free cash, you're right. You wouldn't, you'd lose that 2% as a total gain, but right. you could go the following year and then go back up to that 2.5%. Right, but you've already lost that. You've already lost that uh, uh, one-year gr growth right. that comes... Well, that becomes compounded when you take it over. You know, if you lose ten thousand every year for ten years, you know it's no longer ten thousand. But if you, you, you've changed your base number, yeah, the but base is that much smaller. I understand that, but what's wrong with using the free cash to adjust that base? That's what I'm getting at. If you're just, if we have this much free cash and we're still taxing at the highest allowable level, why not use the free cash to adjust that base? That's, but it's, 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 it's lost it's forever. It's, it's, forever. It's lost forever. It's the problem because well, that base that base stays down here, even though your expenses are going up like this. That base stays down here. Right. It's a, it's 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 a, it's a lousy it's a lousy choice to have to make. Okay, but you know, in the overall picture of things, that as much as I disliked it every year when I sat there, I always voted right along with them because uh, it's a potential loss that the towns cannot. Uh, afford on the long term. If you could make it up the following year, when you, you that'd be fine. You know, you'd say, okay, you know, keep the tax rate down this year. But you lose it, and you lose it forever. But I don't see that as being a problem. I don't know. I may be missing something because over the last 15 years that I saw, we've always gone that two and a half percent, right? And, and the free cash just keeps growing. And I understand that it's coming from other revenue sources and stuff like that. But we are using more and We're more using. every year to offset it because there again, there's more. Uh, right. I'm reading today where they passed another one that that's mandatory that you have to start teaching civics and civics. history. I th it was when I went to school anyway. Teaching, yeah. that's, that's civics and history. Civics and history. And so now that means is another specialty teacher in K through 12. Is there anyone that, who's that not is not teaching it? That's not, uh, you know, that's not uh, uh, funded by the state, you know, and every year you keep, you know, the state keeps uh, chopping more and more uh, uh, of their uh, grants back and everything else. Uh, you get this, you know, this this whole school system that is sending out and the choice in and so forth. That's a train wreck, you know, and there again, that's based on one student <coughs> right here. Next year, if you get one or two or two or three students, it just blows everything else. Now you've got to start cutting because, and there again, if you hadn't kept up with that two and a half increase every year, 
now you have a smaller base, you'd be looking for de uh, debt exclusions to try to even keep up with your regular budget because 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 of that loss that well, over, you'd be it at gets compounds. You'd be looking at overrides. Overrides, yes. You know, so it, it, it's a lousy choice to have to make. Uh, but because the other side is, now that you have that, when you have this, quote, free cash, everybody wants to spend it. Well, let me, let me throw something out and see what people think of it. One of the problems that I have with free cash, using free cash, I don't have a problem with using free cash until you want to use it for an operating budget. I have a real problem with using free cash in the operating budget. Right. And when I talk about operating budget, I'm talking about capital equipment, too. That's operating. And the truck, you know, or the police car dies at the end of four or five years. The truck dies at the end of five or ten years. So that's, that's operating expense. The computers in here die. Those are operating expenses. I'll exempt the buildings because we go, those are the kinds of things that we, uh, that we do debt exclusions on. But everything else, uh, so if you look, and that's why I, you know, I, I wanted to take a look at this one here, uh, you've got revenues. And, and you look down you through at? there, uh, no, just take this one here, for, and I'm not going to... Is that a revenue detail? Yep. Yeah, revenue, it's the big, it's the larger print one. Thank so you. you've got the taxes, <clears throat> that's revenues. Uh, you've got uh, state and local, the cherry sheet, those are revenues. They come every year. Local receipts, those are every year. Uh, you've got some of these other funding sources which you might be able to say are every year, but some of them aren't. But let's take them all anyways. Other funding sources, 200000 At that point, stop. Add those up. And that's what we should be using to say, here's our budget. Here's the cap on our budget. Few but exceptions. Got, but you got to add capital items to that. You got to add Warren articles to what we need. They're in here on this. No, what, I'm, what I'm saying is all of these, this is how much money we have to, to pay the budget. And then if we're throwing in a million dollars in free cash, that's a problem. So if we could tighten up our budgets, we wouldn't generate as much free cash. Well, a lot of it's coming from the receipts, though. That's what we found. Being conservative on the receipts. That's 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 true. And and you know, to the extent that we're offsetting actual receipts, and how much are we offsetting? Five hundred to a million dollars. So, I don't have a problem with saying, okay, we're gonna we're gonna use free cash, and we're gonna estimate be very conservative in our estimates, knowing that that free cash actually is not going to get used because we're going to bring that other revenue in. That's the other, I mean, we use, we use free cash last year. How much free cash? I'm not sure what it was. Uh, 500,000 bucks? Yeah. No. 993. 993. 993. Well, let's take, go back to 17. Use 942. Yep. Okay, so you get 942, and if you would take a look at that sheet that I passed out that showed you the total income. I can find it. Over two million dollars. And how much did we estimate? 1.6. This one point no in for 2017. Two million three seven. Oh, do we estimate? Yeah, yeah 1.6. 1.6, 1. and how much was the actual number that came in? 2,375 plus sewer. Okay, so forget the sewer. So you have yeah, roughly $700,000. So how much free cash did we actually use? $250,000. But there again. That $700,000 became free cash. Yeah. So it was, it was just swapping. Just rot rolling it along. Rolling it over. Right, but the, the thing of it is, when you're calculating that revenue, you are basing the levy limit on being conservative with your cash, uh, with your revenues. 
So the lower you estimate your revenues, so I don't care where they come from, mm -hmm. it be state or, or uh, fees, permits, mm -hmm. or licenses, the more you keep this levy limit up. Mm -hmm. So it still comes, the majority of it still comes from uh, out of taxation okay. and not these other things. Well, but that was the point. We're, yeah. we're, we're using 900000 in free cash in 2017. Right. Which people have already paid taxes on. Yep. Of that $900,000, we brought in, give or take, $700,000 in local receipts that we did not budget. Right. So we actually only used 200000 in free cash. Right. So we've got this other free cash figure that floats around again. <coughs> That's one right. of the other reasons that free cash tends to be so high. You can look at it that way, or you can say yeah. we had local receipts that exceeded what our estimate was. Yeah, and most of the departments uh, have been pretty good. I mean, you know, it's, you know, all, actually all the departments have been pretty good. You know, so, uh, but uh, you know, it, it, you know, there's it's still it's still with the projects are coming up, regardless of how little or how much. It, it's just there's going to be substantial burden put on in a very short period of time. And that's what people have got to start to realize. Now, we're still, we're, we're, we're taxing it at two and a half percent increase, and we don't really have to if we use all the free cash. Right. So what do we do next year when we run out of free cash? What do we do next year when we run out of free cash? We were actually taxing it more than that because, uh, you know, we, yeah, I'm using rough numbers. But yeah, yeah, because you know, there again, that's uh, you're taxing based on last year's. Unfortunately, pe people's bills may go up anywhere from four percent to ten percent. You know, and, and of course, what happens is every year that you raise your levy limit, you lose a little bit more value on the uh, commercial industrial end because part of their valuation is based on their expenses. So the higher their expenses, the lower their valuation. So you're not, you know, so you put more of a burden on the residents, uh, on the residential uh, mm -hmm. actor. No, it, it's a, it's a lose lose situation. I, I don't have an answer for it. It's or go back and, but give us and reduce the base. You know, don't do two and a half percent. Well, even but if then we're can, locked in. It's, it's a, well, that's it's, he can't win. No, you no. It's a lose. That's why I said right. it's a lose lose sit, situation. I sat there for seven years, and every year I, I beat myself up over this because I, you know, one part of me says, you know what, this is this is foolishness to be overtaxing like this. But the other side is, if you don't, next year you could run into a right. real problem. No, and probably not next year, but if you keep well, no, in, in my year, mind, year, in yeah, my no, mind, it's okay. future. But you're right. Yeah. So, so, if you if you keep bringing it down every year, yep. eventually you're gonna you're gonna run into a problem. I agree. Yep. The question is, you know, a few years back, we had we had a tax rate of nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen bucks. Now right. we're at sixteen, um, and that didn't that's not the type of thing where the tax rate needs to go up every year. It doesn't need to go up. Our assessment, our not assessment, but the uh, the assessed value of property over a period of time is going up, and it's going up probably at what, 2 3%? Our, our assessed value this year, I think, is the same or within a couple thousand dollars. The average valuation of the, mm -hmm. the property in this residential property in this town is just about the same in 2018 as it was in 2007. It, house prices are even though house prices have gone up and they probably changed this year. But as far as the valuation so of these, the single, single family residential property is about the same right now, uh, right now as it was in 2007. I just, I just looked this up. So why? Why? Because we had from 2008 and everything else, it went down. We're just coming back out of the hole. Okay, right. so we're coming back up. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're on the way up. But we're, we're, so right now, up. here we are, 10 years later, we're at zero. So back then, back in 2007, the tax rate was eleven dollars and three cents. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's fifteen ninety-five. Now there is, it was a big jump because of the uh, garage in there, yeah. and I don't know exactly what it is. But our budget has gone up every year, <coughs> and to keep up with that budget, that's why it's gone from eleven oh three to sixteen ninety-five because the average house has increased in value. 
no, but point. Has, has the total valuation of the town not by much changed, no. or has it gone down? Well, actually, it's Change, it, not by much. The total valuation has not increased by much, if at all. I didn't look up that factor, but I know for a while. But typically, wouldn't it be reasonable to anticipate at least over a ten-year period? And I'm not arguing that actual what's actually happened. If you had, let's say, a hundred million dollars in, in valuation for the town. Yeah. Wouldn't you anticipate that over some 10 or 20 year period, that valuation would increase by no. a fairly substantial amount? Yeah, but you have to understand, Deerfield has this issue of some properties being removed from the tax rolls. Coming out the rolls, right. And that offsets some, uh, a, a fair amount, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, and but you're right in the overall scheme of things it does but every town it's not just Deerfield went through this every town around is the same thing uh, most of them are, some have claimed out of the hole faster than others but uh, a lot of them are, for the last uh, seven or eight years their valuations are actually started down between 07, 08 <coughs> and 09 and they dropped way down and now they're coming back the last two or three years are coming back up the next couple of years, I think it'll be a uh, dramatic climb, but uh, the, uh, the you know people think that things have gone, even though you're looking at it, uh, the problem is is you're looking at it from what you're thinking it was. It was actually even in Deerfield uh, for quite a while. you could you could buy houses for you know between 100 and, 170 to 200. Now you can't touch anything for less than three. So why did the tax rate go up? If the assessed value of the property, I mean, ultimately because the because a tax value rate would... because a tax rate is based on the previous year levy of two and a half percent. So you know, we, you know, so it has nothing to do with the valuation. It's got to have something to do with it. If well, it does, but your it has to do with your budget. Okay, you increase your budget by four percent, it's got to be made up somewhere. Okay. Well, if if but if property values. We've got inflation factor. Let's assume the inflation factor is 2.5%. We'll just yep. throw it off for now. Yep. That over some period of time, house price is going to increase about 2.5%. The evaluation is going to increase by 2.5% a year over time. Your budget's going up by 2.5%. Tax rate should stay the same. Well, the budgets have not been going up by 2.5%. But we've had new growth that made up for some of that. So instead of being 2.5%, well, it's been 3%. Well, it's 3%, but we haven't even been staying inside the 3%. But the total valuation stayed the same. Right. 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 So, 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 so you're assuming so it's you got to 2.5%. Well, no, I just I said over a period of time, one would anticipate. I mean, I. But the other problem is, is your budget being offset by a lot of this other state, you know, uh, state aid and everything else. That has been reduced. State aid has stayed pretty. Yeah, but has, has not has not increased. Well, it's been you're, pretty, you're, pretty stable. Somewhat stable. It goes your like school, this, your it school, is your school, sick. your choice in and choice out in charter school is rate made a tremendous amount. Uh, there again, you know, you you got uh, uh, your labor factor and uh, across the board for you know everybody, and uh, so. But you're still, if you raised a thousand dollars this year, regardless of what the valuation does. The levy limit next year allows you two and a half percent on that. So, uh, mm -hmm. so if it was only ten dollars this year to get two and a half percent, it's got to be uh, eleven dollars this year. So your rate keeps going up to match the number. The budgets are made backwards, okay? And unfortunately, mm -hmm. part of, well, they yeah. are because you're yeah. passing a budget, and then then the numbers to fit this levy are produced yeah. in yeah. November and December. These are only estimates, right. but you you can't exceed that levy limit, right? If the pr tax that levy determined, right. is eleven million two hundred eighty-two thousand eight hundred eighty-six dollars, right. I don't care what happens to the to the budget; it can go up ten percent. Right. You can't tax more than right. eleven million two hundred eighty-two thousand eight hundred eighty-six months. Right. But it, on the back end, what's happening is. Now you're taking that number and backing your levy into that, so you can get mm -hmm. up to that number. Oh, I know. We're keeping. We're taking. We're taking as much as we can get. Right. Which in this case, it seemed to me it was like uh, about a little over three percent. So right. But there again, plus the debt, plus debt exclusion. Right. Right. You know, so, but you're but you're you're backing the number in up here. You're not building this number and coming up to here. You got this number here, and you're backing all the other numbers up up to it. 
No, and that, and unfortunately, I, 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 you know, that's what I did see in the assessor's office is some people just assumed what was happening when they're voting in April. They were, that's what their tax rate, and then they come in all bent out of shape when they finally get their tax bill because things went up, some 400, 500, mine went up 1,000, other people went up that much, and it's like, well, you know, you voted this in April, and it's like, well, what do you mean? Well, that's when you voted it. You voted your tax <coughs> rate in April, and it's just being fixed yeah. now. You know, uh, so it's, uh, How late do you guys want to stay here? Because I've got one more thing I want to throw out, and then I'm going to... Oh, whatever you need is... The last thing that I wanted to throw out is on last Saturday, uh, three or four of us ended up at the, uh, I don't know, rural schools, whatever it was up in uh, GCC. GCC. And uh, we're talking about rural schools. We were talking about budgets and all kinds of stuff. And uh, so you're going to have. Uh, ah, it must be your buddy this time. It's falling from down there. there there's a, Where, who there's sits? A, there's a lot of them. Who sits here? With a select Don't say Carol. nothing because the of mosquitoes will be looking at ants now. <laughs> <laughs> In the ant control district. Well, the ant walked across here, went all the way across the table, came along the blue thing. Coming there around. it is right there. That's the fifth oh. one I've seen tonight. Yeah. Go Skip, you're supposed to collect that and send it to UMass. Yes. Yep. Okay. I'll leave it here. I hate to say the, it, but let the select if they're out here, I'd hate to see what they are mm -hmm. in Karen's office because that, that's always been a problem there. in there. Not anymore. It's not building a damn thing. <laughs> in any event, uh, they were talking about the group, a group of towns that uh, are likely to see a, uh, a hit on their uh, Chapter 70 funds because of foundation budgeting and, uh, and what they were talking about was the wealthy towns. And they looked at towns like Weston and Wellesley and a few other the high priced towns. And uh, they, had a, they had a book, you know, printed off from a computer someplace. And they had the list of all the towns and it was open to the to Franklin County. And uh, so I asked, I said, you got towns in Franklin County? And they, they looked and they said, there are a couple. But they wouldn't tell me what they were. So I walked over and took a look at them. Then I looked and it came back, and Carolyn was sitting there, and I said, hey, Carolyn, let you know, Deerfield is a wealthy town. Made the list. We will be made the list. So on Friday, good luck. You're going to hear all about it. <laughs> I, I already know it all. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say it like that. I've, I've spoken with different people <laughs> through different agencies in the state about why we didn't get grant funding for the sewer plant or other things like that. And although we do receive our fair share of some of them, everybody says that we're wealthy. Yeah. No, and, and I don't know I don't know why that is. But well, do. there again, you know, let me tell you why. Take a look at the balance that we carry on our books. <laughs> you can't get one point nine million dollars of free cash. Yeah. You can't have one point two million dollars of stabilization. Now we got another stabilization account with a couple hundred thousand dollars. Couple million in CPA. Yeah. Well, yeah, CPA two million dollars. You're talking five ten million dollars. We're rich compared to most towns around us. Well, the other thing is, is supposedly our per capita is at what sixty eight to seventy thousand something like that. Well, I don't know. Income. Somebody said that. I would like to know. Yes. It, and it's, and you know, I'm I'm just wondering whether we're having the same problem that uh, Buckland and Shelburn did that they're lumping in. Uh, Zip codes. Uh, oh, 01342. Well, of course, it would be. It, is, right, is, exactly. Is field as, well as, as well as there is yeah. a lot of uh, uh, Waitley in uh, 01373. Yeah, so, so we, we get those dollars, but we don't get the population. Right. So I'm wondering if, if you know, they, those, all those numbers have been brought in to raise our per capita up. And, uh, so the select are going to find out because you know uh, uh, Buckland and Shelburne, uh, uh, I think it's Buckland that's having a real issue, uh, and I think they're finally getting, making some headway on that because of the same reason because they've been locked out of grants and all sorts of aid because their per capita is way up and it's because they have been lumped in with uh, Shelburne and Nashville. I think it is part of their zip across mm -hmm. the both. 
And I'm wondering if maybe that's what's happening here because I, well, I, I certainly be didn't see it. As, you know, a small part of that. What uh, I, you know, it, it's tough to believe that that we have. Is it average? Is it per capita per income capita. Or, or whatever it is that we would be anywhere near exactly some of those larger the, the, the towns in the eastern part of the state? I know. I mean, you can you can list a whole bunch, and we got 350 towns, and I think the number is 17 percent of the towns or 15 percent of the towns, whatever. So you you're looking at 50 towns, and we're in that list of 50 wealthiest towns in the state. And there again, the other, the other thing in, in there again, I don't know how it's done, but uh, do they take the asset value of the whole town, including everything that is un, not taxable? Do you want to be on a committee to study this? I'm already on enough. <laughs> Bruce? Do you want to be on Bruce, a committee to study it? Uh, Bruce and I said no. I will be. Bruce and Bruce. I'll do <laughs> the company. You will be? No. Oh. You can you mention that to Carolyn. She's going to be looking for people. She's going to be looking for people to, to be on the committee. <coughs> I'll remember him. <laughs> What's my name? <laughs> <laughs> what base you on? Hey, Al. Bruce. Al, you said you wanted to be on the committee? <laughs> <laughs> Mary. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah, we can support Mary. She's not here tonight. Uh, well, <laughs> Susan. Oh, well, actually, you and Carolyn would work well together. Boy, that's a good job, buddy. Oh, man. Uh, I, you can, it it I, can, I can feel it. <laughs> so, uh, I threw it in a bat. Oh, it did. Wow. We had a resident come in. I know who it was. Are we still on TV? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, would you like to adjourn? Was it, Are we going to set a date? Or Are we going to do the next no. Tuesday? Did you have a comment or two? Maybe Henry had a comment or two. No, I, uh, I just wanted to come down comment. and I want to just listen to what you guys are doing. I, didn't, I started was. watching on TV, no, but I figured if I wanted to talk about, about anything, I'd come down. Huh? I didn't notice. The only thing that I wanted to talk about was the tractor. If you guys, I, I know you don't want to. Yo, go ahead. One of the, you know, I went and looked at the tractor and stuff, and I don't really have a problem with their tractor and mower. It's you know their drop-on cab, the loader, the and all the other things that go with it, which more than doubles the tractor cost. One of the questions that I have is uh, with the loaders, how many of these standards have hydraulic license or properly licensed to operate a loader, uh, even though it's a lawn tractor? Yeah. Then, if they don't have licenses, are we going to ask them and pay for them to get licenses? Now they're not going to be janitors; they're going to be operators. Right. Would that increase it? Who's going to pay for their uh, annual? Um, Continuing education. Are we going to do that like at the highway department? You know, I can kind of see this whole thing snowballing. Um, you know, and the, the cap that they want to put on there, I can understand well, you don't want to be out in the cold in the wintertime if you're using the snowblower. But I also know this type of cab is not what comes from John Deere. It doesn't have defrosters and stuff like that. So people that have these things, they're, they're kind of useless because you can't see anything inside of them. And so then in the summertime. It has a heater. Huh? It's boldly that one has it. Oh, it has a, it does have a heater. It so has it a heater and it just up. blows heat, but it, once it gets hot and, you know, in the wintertime, it, it, everything fogs up. Yeah. Uh, then you've got this cab without air conditioning. Who's going to want to drive it in the summertime when you're mowing grass all the time? You can take it off. You can take it off. Okay. No, you want air conditioning for it. Uh, but anyhow, I, I just, too. you know, I just thought it was a bit Do excessive. Do I see the uh, loader so, part? I wasn't sure in the broom. Well, they, they have they have a snowblower and they have a broom, and I'm sure that you know they they, they didn't look bad to me, but I'm sure they need to be replaced. Yeah. Uh, but do they have know, a do they have a loader now? No. No. Because the one thing I'd be afraid of is they'd be blowing the front tires out all the time because you're trying to do too much work for a little tiny tractor. I I, I don't well, know that. <laughs> well, no, they have a large tractor, but it doesn't work. Yeah, but do they have I a know. loader for that? No. No. Well, why they, do they need the loader? I, I, I have because, no idea. I, you know, I, I can see that being a major well, if they're not properly exp licensed, expense for repairs gonna, and yeah. so forth because they're not, they're not built for heavy-duty work. They're, no. You know, they're, they're a glorified homeowner thing, and they're going to be trying to uh, oh, cut, snow, uh, cut ice with it and everything else, picking that up. And I can see them bending the frame. The other thing is I see is they're ordering uh, 
tur turf tires on that. So uh, what good is that going to be in the winter time? Uh, so now you've got to have weights and Well, chains. it is four-wheel drive, but still. Yeah, but turf tires? Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, if they're going to mow, they're going to mow grass, so you, you need the turf tires. So. No, you well, do. Uh, you yeah, do. But true. I'm saying but, in but the winter the question time. is, what can you use it at that point to snow plow? Right. right. You, can right. Buy a, you can buy a John Deere, you know, 30-inch snow blower for $1,100, but because it's this attachment, it's 4000 you know, and that's 5400 though. That's a 54 inch though. Right. It is. Yeah. It is bigger. There's yeah. no doubt. Yeah. I, you know, I, I just think. Well, what do that you recommend we do? I'd recommend that they get the tractor and the mower and leave everything else off. I don't know if you can. Uh, we we well we haven't looked at this. We'll yeah. look at it next year. You guys were next week. You yeah. guys get it Friday. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about it. Now, the, uh, I've been trying to find out if these guys are actually properly licensed. So, and, so the question I had is, we mow Hurl Hay Field with this. Frontier has a permanent field there that they use, softball. I, I believe they did. I know. I thought that was owned by the town of Whiteley. It is. It, owned it, it was given to the town of Whiteley. It is. And t so I don't does. know what they did to it for an agreement between Whiteley and Frontier. They've been mowing it for years. Yeah, they have. And, and what agreement they have, I have no idea. Ask Billy Smith, I'm sure he has. A so I think they play soccer there, Frontier. But I'm not sure if they play softball. They don't play baseball, they have their own field. They have Dallas High School. So I'm not sure why we're mowing that field. <clears throat> because, because we can. Because we didn't. Because the four towns have become a part of Frontier, use it at some point in time. And we all split and we pay 50% of the mowing because we have 50% of the population. That's not right. I think the bigger issue we got to stop. One of the beginning. school committee meetings that I met over there was explain that the grass has to be maintained at a certain height for game day and I'm sure it does just soccer. be mode just before games or whatever the case may be I don't know I played a lot of sports and my fields got mowed once a week so I'm just concerned why we're paying 50% <coughs> of the mowing of a field that's owned by another community yeah no I you know, if we have to spend $36,000 to buy a tractor to do it but we still pay 50% of that tractor. $17,000. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make any sense to me. I think the issue is, where is the agreement? What do we have to pay? What is the percentage? Why do we have to mow it? I want to see that before I vote. Oh, yes. If we didn't have early field to do it, we still need the same tractor do just our fields. I, I no, think we so don't. that this, well, not that big. I don't know. This is not a very big tractor at all. I mean, no. it's really it's, a lawnmower. No, it's right. Yes, it's, it has that's what concerns me. Oh, yeah, okay. It, yeah, it's, what's, it's a small. What's the size? What was the track cost of the tractor? The tractor was 12900 yeah. and, and we're boosting it up to $33,000. 33000 yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was I was down at, and I know I understand all too well about the whole procurement thing, but yeah. I was just down at the home show, and they had the exact same tractor. On it was sale for nine thousand eight hundred and twenty-five dollars something. Like well, that. I went on all all all, uh, all power there, and the the, the snowblower on there is like twenty-five fifty for the same one. It's four thousand on this sheet. Yeah, I I, I, oh. I know, but I, I you know I, I'm not I'll never get used to how the towns really get taken advantage of like that. But I I just I I I have learned very quickly not to be a fan of these so-called bid-ready companies because they've gone through all the procurement hoops for the state so municipalities, municipalities can just go to them and get this without going out for three bids. Yep. But it's not a deal at all. You pay dearly for that. Nothing, nothing stops you from sending out. Well, you can't I, I know. You well, know, you can't you can't the school committee you have no... Well, no, no, no. no. There's nothing present, the stops the school committee from, from going out and getting... Three bids. Bids. bids, exactly. No, I and, know. And see if they can't get it for less. Yeah, right. and if they go to the manufacturer, they definitely will. Yeah. When they go to the middle person in mass higher education, um, that procurement process, they're going to a middle person. 
right. and you're adding 10 to 15 percent. Right. It's generally cheaper than going through a general contractor if you're going to buy playground equipment. Right. Because the general contractor is going to have 15 percent overhead and profit. He's going to have to buy it from because there's supplier limitations in, in the region. They're charging five to ten percent profit, and then the manufacturers making their profit. So you hit the middleman, but but bidding typically is best when you do a larger municipal project, not small capital items. Mm. Uh, it's eight o'clock. We've been here for two hours. Make a motion, Second. Moved. Seconded. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.